On this week's episode, we're going to take a look at the difference between chopped and pulled pork. We'll have a secret uh, ingredient that you will give us. And you know what this is? Looks like an egg crate to me, Bill. Not an egg crate, but we will find out about this barbecue gadget on this week's episode. It's a gizmo. Grill great. Sharp right here. Starts Ooh. right now. From the birthplace of American barbecue, right here, the uh, low country of South Carolina, this is Grill Greats. It's Bill West, Jack Weybor, and uh, another episode. We're going to look at a couple different fun things, and one of them is what this is. Don't, don't tell yet. Well, you can think about it. It looks like a torture device or something, No, though. it's got some spikes on there. No doubt. We'll look into that in just a minute. Plus, Dangerous. the secret ingredient today is uh, got some kick to it. Kick to it. We'll get into that in just a minute. Um, I actually had some good meat recently. Good Any barbecue. Good meat? Yeah. I went to my favorite place, Scania's Barbecue in Augusta. Have you been to Scania's? I have not. Have you heard of it? No. Just good, affordable. I had the beef. I like the beef. But... Buffet? No. Order it up. Order it Cafeteria up. Cafeteria style? Yeah. I mean, no, it's like a big, uh, it's an Augusta legend. So if anybody gets to, I'll have to bring some back next time. Cause, what uh, kind of uh, pork do they sell? They do, they cook whole hams, and you know, they have ribs and all too, but chopped, whole sliced. ham, and it is chopped. Chopped? Chopped. Interesting. Yeah. Um, sauce? I'll try and find out. Yeah, they got a bunch of good... good Different uh, kinds? I guess more like a West Carolina sauce, but my, my I would say my favorite, so... Your favorite place to go? One of, one of them. It's gone, yours. Good We'll place. have to investigate some other places here soon, but good stuff. Let's get right into viewer mail here. Jack and Bill, they write. I've always loved a good barbecue sandwich. Speaking of Scania's, um, I have made it myself a bunch. I am not totally clear on the difference in regular, chopped, sliced, and pulled. Are they cooked differently? And since I have my first cook-off coming up this August, can you use all methods in competition barbecue? Thanks for your help. Signed, Patrick in Florida. Patrick in Florida. Great question, Patrick. Thanks for writing in. Um, there is a, a huge difference between uh, chopped pork, pulled pork, uh, sliced pork, and there is a difference in temperature when you get those particular oh, really? uh, cuts done. Yep. Um, classically, uh, when you serve a when you serve pork, classically ham is chopped, shoulders are pulled, loins are sliced. Is that just BS? No, it's not BS. That's we teach that in the Carolina pit Say it school. again. Hams are chopped. Okay. Shoulders are pulled loins are sliced. So when you're doing a contest and you're putting your box together, right. Bill, you have to be able to communicate with the judges on, you want to show all the parts that's, of the hog. That's when you're doing the whole hog. Okay. When you do the whole hog. Maybe you said that, but yeah, the loin is one thing I never really, until the class, I never realized, you, okay, you're slicing. Slicing loins. Okay. Now you can slice a Boston butt, but when you slice a Boston butt, we got beer, oh we do. Cheers. Back to Allagash, beer. Um, when you slice a Boston butt, you don't want to cook it as, you want to, don't want to cook it to 190 200 degrees because it's basically falling apart, so you won't be able to slice it. You want to cut your cook time at about 180. That for way which the, one? That, for the Boston bud. Okay. That way the meat will stay together when you slice it. Okay. When you go past the 185 into the 190 range, now you're looking at getting into the pulling range where meat will just fall apart and you can pull. I prefer pulled pork. A lot of people like chopped pork. Um, chopped pork is a, is a classic sandwich in North Carolina. They take the pork, they chop it all up, but they use hams a lot in North Carolina now. So they, they chop the pork up, but you put the, the, the chopped pork on the, on, the, on the bun, you put the coleslaw on top, and then you go ahead and lit it up and you're ready to go. With the rules, there are all sorts of different regionalized things. I mean, the South Carolina judges, when you're talking pork other than the, the loin, you're pretty much talking pulled, right? I mean, if you hear people, I've heard them say, if you hear rat a tat 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 chopping in the morning, yeah, you're like, you like to hear, you like to hear <laughs> I'm going to win, going, right? Oh, that's right. But see, that's South Carolina. Is that South Carolina is a, is a pull, is pulled pork area. Um, Memphis does do a lot of chopped pork. Um, chopped pork is generally, generally when judges see chopped pork, they thoroughly believe that you're trying to hide something. 
Because when a judge picks up a piece of meat, he likes to be able to pull it apart and be able to look at it and be able to tell how tender it is and bite a big piece of it to see how tender it is, to see how the, you know, how the cook did with that piece of meat. When you chop pork up into a fine chop, you really are taking away from what you're doing. You don't have your bar your bark as much either, right? Yeah, and the bark is always a big a big right. deal, which is like the little the crust. Right. Unless you go to a rough chop. Now, I've been to a lot of places that uh, you know they have a rough chop. Uh, um, you know, you throw it in the, on the cutting board, chop it up three or four times, bat 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 bat, throw it on a bun, and then you're good. See, as long as you have big chunks to work with. What is it when I've seen I've seen chop that it's like real fluffy almost. Even had uh, palmetto pig right sure. down the road here. It's like it's chopped, but it's Almost like it's got fluffy air in it. Yeah, What's... They, with a chopping process, that's generally a mechanical chop there. Like a chopper? Yeah, a chopper, a buffalo chopper will chop. See, I like that, good. though. There's you nothing, can't really do that in There's really nothing wrong with it. competition, can you? I wouldn't do it. Uh, the judges, would. The judges again, can't really judge your meat. Gotcha. All they can judge is how well it's chopped. Tastes good, though. Yeah, it tastes good. Um, sauce goes right in. So there you go. Chop versus pulled. And S pulled sliced. is probably more common. And then you just got to... I prefer pulled pork myself. It's my favorite way to make pork. Okay. Um, our hot on the market gadget today is this, and you really, I'm sure you know what this is. You probably used it. It probably would be most recognizable that way. Yeah, it probably is. This is a, it looks like a standard rib rack, Bill. Standard rib rack, and I guess these spikes are for like potatoes or something, or, but. Uh, yeah, I never thought about that. The use for it would be, you can pretty much double, you know, you got a, a rack of ribs, you're only going to be able to fit a couple of racks on a small smoker like that this way you can hit one two three say four racks of ribs yeah or you can put them on there and bend them around it'll be two uh it's not really you know really? You, you may it may be a rack of ribs is about that long so yeah. it may be tough to keep it held up in there uh rib rack is good for uh keeping the meat up off the grate um and allows the meat to or allows the the um uh, collagen and the meat to kind of drop out to the bottom rather than it kind of swimming around in its own fat does it matter do you rotate them uh, through, you can. It, it all depends where your fire is and what kind of method you're using to cook. If you're coming up from the bottom, it really doesn't matter. You can flip it once up and down and make sure that you get an even cook on it. Great little, great little gadget right there. I like the little spikies on there. I didn't think about uh, putting a potato or a vegetable on there or something. That's nice. Best thing about it is it, it, it'll save you some grill space. It will. If, if you need it. Without a doubt. Otherwise, I don't know if you need it, but it, it'll help you with grill I space. I use rib racks a lot uh, just for that reason, to save uh, grill space. There you go. Rib rack and they're cheap. Good stuff. Oh, Weber makes a nice one, by the way. Our secret ingredient today? No, let me do our secret ingredient today. I'll tease you a little bit. Um, something that's got a kick. It's a kicker. There's just hundreds of different variations. There are. And uh, I think the one thing you're going to talk about, I've got in my sauce. Really? My my award-winning sauce. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine just cook and use my sauce in a uh, I had no idea you had an award-winning sauce, Bill. Yes, it's now so it's officially, it was like a neighborhood competition. So I can call it, officially could call it award-winning. Um, coming up in a second with the uh, secret ingredient. First, the website of the week, and this is appropriate because we um, we're just talking about competitions and different kind of regionalized right. things. Um, KCBS dot us. That is the KCBS website. Uh, Kansas City Barbecue Society has their own website. Uh, they post all the. Uh, contests up there, all the contest scores. They have a gizmo and gadget section on there, links to just about everything you want, clothing, uh, ways to become a KCBS judge. Uh, there's just all the information for the KCBS is at KCBS. I like the logo. They got a cool, you know, they got cool hats and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they do. The one thing I liked about their website, I've used it in the past, is the uh, they've got a real good things you need for your first cook on. They've right. got some good cheat sheets and good help. They really do. If you're going to go do your first competition, kcbs.us. I said or dot .us. Yes, kcbs.us. Kansas City Barbecue. Go Sorry. there. Have a good time. All right, secret ingredient is pepper. Pepper or peppers. I think we're going to talk about chilies is what we're going to talk about, really. Chili peppers. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about the chipotle um, in the length. A chipotle is a smoked jalapeno. Uh, it's smoked and dried. Uh, good stuff. Um, you could use it in a lot of different ways, um, especially uh, if you use it dry. You can put it in your mortar and pestle that we talked about on our last show. Grind it up, and you have chili powder that way. So the well chipotle for dried ones. I use the uh, the ones in adobo. In a chipotle in adobo. Cheap, and I actually use it for the sauce. However, right. you got to watch the spice on it because if you use in competition, right? They don't judges are. They like it pretty tame. And actually, I think the chipotle pepper is probably the best thing to use uh, because it's a jalapeno. The heat is not all that strong, and it's easy to move to the back of your palate so it doesn't come up on the front. 
interesting. I, uh, I use it a lot. I use the chipotle pepper in a lot of different things, both dried and the chipotle and adobo. Good right. stuff. Where do you get the dried? Uh, you can buy it on uh, any uh, chili pepper rack and uh, in your basic discounter store. All They're right. there. We'll find a link. Uh, that's it for now. Where are you cooking next? Uh, we'll be in uh, probably uh, Daytona at the um, big show at the Daytona, uh, not the Daytona 500, the Daytona Speedway for the 4th of July. Hug your mama. Hug because your mama. We've got to keep up the tradition. Got to hug your See mama. See you next week.